Today we, we will be looking at a couple of calculations involving changes to the conditions of a gas. We're going to use this table here with pressure, temperature, volume, and number of particles as a way to organize what we know and don't know and to strategize how we're going to solve the problem. So as I encounter a number in the problem, I'm going to figure out where it fits into this table. A balloon with a volume of 2 liters. So 2 liters is the first thing that I want to place in my table, and it is a volume. So I'm going to put 2 liters here. It's filled with a gas at 3 atmospheres. Atmospheres is a unit of pressure, so I'm going to place this in my initial pressure location. 3 ATM, that's the abbreviation for atmospheres. If the pressure is reduced, so that implies a change. We've gone from the beginning, the initial, to the end, or the final pressure. It's reduced to 0.5 atmospheres, so that's going to be 0.50 is my final pressure. Without a change in temperature. So I'm going to just put a slash to my temperature to represent that the temperature is not changing, so I don't need to worry about it in this problem. And we want to know what is the new volume of the balloon. There's no mention of number of particles either, so I'm going to assume that those will stay the same. To strategize here, it looks like the two variables we're looking at a relationship between our pressure and volume. We're going to start our problem. It's going to look similar to a factor label problem. We're going to start with the variable we want to adjust. We would want to adjust, in this case, the volume. And we need to know the relationship between pressure and volume. Pressure went down. It went from three down to a half. And from the lab, we know that if the pressure gets higher, the volume gets larger. So we need to somehow adjust this two liters to get a number that is larger than two liters. And we need to make an adjustment based upon how the pressure changes. So in every problem, we're going to set up a kind of a conversion factor using, or for each step, using the numbers in our problem. Remember, we want, because pressure went down, we want a relationship that makes volume go up. So we need a conversion factor that is bigger than 1, because if we multiply 2 by a fraction that's bigger than 1, we're going to get a bigger volume. So to do that, I could either put 3 divided by a half, or we could put half divided by 3. I think which of those is going to give me a number that is bigger than 1. And the option that will give me something bigger than 1 is to put 3 atmospheres on the top and a half atmosphere on the bottom. We've learned about factor label method. Liter has, is only on the top, so liter does not cancel out, but we have atmospheres on the top and the bottom. So that means our what's left to be our label for our answer is liters, which is good. We want a volume. This is telling me to take 2 times 3 divided by a half, which gives me a result of 12 liters. I always want to check significant figures, so looking back in my problem, I've got two significant figures, two significant figures, and two. All the measurements have two significant figures, so my answer should also have two significant figures. And I want to double check that I got the kind of answer I was expecting. Pressure got smaller, so I'm expecting volume to get bigger. And my volume went from 2 liters to 12 liters, so it did get bigger. An alternative way to think about these um, multiplication with this little pressure factor is to think about it as figuring out the percent that the volume will change. Pressure changed by 600%, so I took 3 divided by 0.5. It went down by 600%. So my pressure will, as a result, go up by 600% because this is a, an inverse relationship. So you can think about these um, factors that we're making out of our pressure as like adjusting. I'm adjusting the volume for how the pressure changed. All right, let's look at another example. The second example is going to be a little bit more challenging than the first because this time we've got several different variables changing. The temperature is changing, 
and the pressures changing. And we're going to have to take into account the effect of both of these changes. So, again, I start by just recording what I know and what I don't know and organizing myself from the table. Its first number I encounter is 600 milliliters. Milliliters is a unit of volume, so that must be my starting volume. Nitrogen is heated from 27 degrees Celsius to 77 degrees Celsius. Well, I need to change the degree Celsius and the Kelvin temperature in order to have a proportional relationship. So I am going to make that adjustment. 27 plus 273 is 300 Kelvin. That'll be my initial temperature. And 77 plus 273 is 350 Kelvin. The pressure changes from one. 0.03 kilopascals, that's my starting pressure, to 1.12 kilopascals. And there's no mention of number of particles, so that must stay constant in this problem. It asks, what is the final volume? So I'm trying to figure out the final volume. I'm going to think about my relationships. First, let's start with pressure. Pressure increased. The pressure volume relationship is an inverse relationship. So if pressure increases, that should cause the volume to decrease. Now I'm going to consider the temperature relationship. Temperature went up. Temperature going up should cause volume to go up because that is a direct relationship. Now I'm going to set up my calculation for my numbers. I start with what I'm trying to make an adjustment to, in this case the volume. I'm going to make an adjustment based on how the pressure changes and make another adjustment based on how the temperature changes. Pressure, the pressure went up. As a result, the volume needs to go down, so I need this factor to be something less than 1, something that will make my 600 milliliters get smaller when I multiply it by 600. So I'm going to put 1.03 on the top. and 1.12 kilopascals on the bottom. Next, I'm going to consider the effects of temperature. As I said, temperature going up should cause the volume to go up, so this factor should be a factor that would make volume get bigger. Therefore, I'm going to put temperature on the top, three, or 350 on the top. I'm going to put 300 on the bottom. This is a factor that's greater than 1, and its effect on volume will be to make volume get bigger. Now, I'm not really sure this time if I expect volume to get bigger, I expect, expect it to get smaller because the pressure effect and the temperature effect are having opposite um, effects upon the volume. So I'm going to take 600 times 1.03 times 350 divided by 1.12 and divided by 300. And when I do that, my unrounded answer is 643.75. So we need to check significant figures. There's three here because there's a point. There are two in each of my temperatures, and there are three in my pressures. So that means I should round my answer to have two significant figures, the smallest of all those options. So it'll be 640 milliliters. And that is an example of a two-step problem.